uncle's work. Um, oh, we're going to have to highlight that issue as well. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being on our program today. I'm Armando F. Sanchez. I'll be your host. This is part of the programming of a global production uh, role model series. I have two wonderful persons in the entertainment industry. They have this beautiful theater uh, production, uh, movie production that they're doing. We have uh, Richard Montes, who... Uh, worked with his wife, Jade Puga, and uh, they did a comedy that's going to, that's on film, and it's going to start airing in September 2015. So we want to highlight the, the topic, uh, why it was produced, uh, what they're hoping to accomplish by sharing this with the public, and invite you and me and all of us to attend. And I definitely want to go see this. I mean, I, we've had some prior conversations about the topic in the area. It's just delightful. I, I'm looking forward to it. I've never seen such a plot. So we'll go with that. So <laughs> let's bring the experts on the show. First of all, tell us the title. It's a beautiful title. It's very unique. I had to do some research on it. And tell us, how did you end up picking that topic? <laughs> well, the name of the, the film is A Guru Phobia. And um, one of the things we were doing when we were deciding what project to, to make was um, what, what, like it had to be unique. It had to be a unique film. And um, one of the inspirations was uh, my father had recently passed away and he was a very big comedy fan. Uh. So we wanted to make a comedy f uh, film as a tribute to him. Well, that's awesome. What a great idea. And, uh, you know, as how did specifically did you get, tell us about the overall plot of the title and the movie and how you ended up with this concept of, of creating this. Um, well, the, the title is Agoraphobia, uh, which is a play on the word agoraphobia, which is uh, kind of like a psychological I guess it's a disorder. It's listed as a kind of like a disorder where people are afraid to leave their home. Right. Um, so they've been like maybe embarrassed out in public and then they kind of retreat into their home and become hermits. And um, so the, the, that's a, the title's a guru phobia and it's play on the word agoraphobia. And our film is about uh, this woman who is agoraphobic. Uh, her name's Crystal Luna. Which and happens to be which happens to be you. That's awesome. Yeah, that's the, the, I play Crystal Luna. Um, and uh, yeah, and, and she's agoraphobic and she becomes a guru phobic <laughs> uh, <laughs> on a, on a guru. You want to talk about the guru? So um, Crystal is obsessed with this uh, guru online. Uh, the guru Nana played by Pepe Serna. And um, the guru sells happiness in the forms of books, posters, cups, everything you can imagine. Happy. Just be happy. <laughs> yeah, he has like- I'm starting a, to laugh already. I haven't seen the movie. Mom already started to laugh at all this. He has an internet um, a happiness show. And that's how he reaches the masses. And Crystal is one of his really devote followers. She's ah. obsessed with everything Nanak. And so she, she sells his products through her home. You know, she has a group of friends that she's trying, she's trying to be like the guru. She's trying to help out her friends and at the same time selling his merchandise. And everything is going well for her until she gets a foreclosure notice. She's losing her home now. So she wants to try to save her home. She's developed a spiritual device she calls the wave vibrator <laughs> and wave vibrator she's gonna take go through, it go through that again a what a wave a vibrator, vibrator. <laughs> ah. I, I think i'm turning red here on my own or something i don't know what it <laughs> she wants to go and take it to nanak the guru and see, you know, maybe he will purchase it from her and sell it and help people reach enlightenment. It's but her answer to like reaching enlightenment. And I know it's, uh, <laughs> there's definitely some, you know, uh, some uh, puns in there, but like, uh, where yeah. Do you guys, where do you guys come up with these ideas? 
we wrote it together um, one hot summer. <laughs> <laughs> One hot summer, we, we were writing this uh, screenplay, and uh, yeah, there, there was just, uh, we, it's, it was started from a small kind of nugget that started snowballing into, um, and what if this happens, and what if that happens? So we kind of took this character and, and really put her through the ringer of uh, all the possibilities that could happen with a person who is um, kind of really in a not in a great state of mind um, and uh, very, you know, at her wits end with her life, uh, facing foreclosure, not having left her house for so long and um, only having a, a, a small group of uh, friends who, who, who also have all of their own issues. Um, and they're very quirky, like uh, her little group, they need help because one of them can't stand to hear laughing. Uh, another one can't um, can't. Uh, another one is obsessed with uh, aliens. <laughs> so so they each yeah. have their. Like, this is starting to sound like my friends here. I, I'm starting to worry <laughs> here. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. Uh, those of you that are included in that list, I, I you know yeah, I love you anyway, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so, Crystal's life. She doesn't receive the help that she needs. And so not receiving the help, the help that she needs, she starts mentally to kind of deteriorate and kind of spin out of control mm. to the point where she's believing that the guru is trying to steal her vibrator at all costs. <laughs> <laughs> this is getting better and better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, you so must have had one heck of a summer working on this project. You, might, you guys must have been falling off your chair half the time. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, it was pretty intense. It was it was a hot summer, and uh, uh, we're based out of uh, Toluca Lake, which is uh, you know we're like pretty much in the valley, so it's it's a bit a little hotter over here. <laughs> so. Uh, you know, I one thing I sort of I don't want to take away from the show, but I, I gotta ask you, what's all that beautiful artwork behind you? I, I I've been watching it, you know, and just enjoying it also. Uh, could you tell us just a little bit about that? Sure. Do you want to? Because I know sure. we have a few things going on back here. Well, back here. Yeah. And this side here's the guru, um, ah. and his guru outfit. And then we have this jazz piece right up here. Um, this is uh, was drawn by my uncle, uh, Gary mm -hmm. High. Oh, and, wow. uh, it's a jazz piece. Uh, he has several different jazz pieces that, that he has uh, drawn over the years. And uh, his artwork hangs in uh, quite a few homes. <laughs> yeah, some very prominent uh, people have bought his work. And uh, his name is Gary High. He has a, a gallery in Idlewild. In Idlewild. Idlewild, California. You can find his gallery. It's wonderful work. Fantastic. Well, maybe we'll see some of it also in the theaters and different areas that you go at. I mean, really beautiful work. Where can persons, our listeners, our viewers, where can they find information about your movie? Because I understand that it's going to be on the West Coast and then it's going one theater on the East Coast. Uh, thanks to uh, Esparza's movies, uh, theaters. Tell us about that link, please. Um, you can go to agurufobia.com. That's A-G-U-R-U-P-H-O-B-I-A.com. Uh, you can also find us on Facebook, uh, facebook.com backslash agurufobia. Same thing with our Twitter and Instagram. And we post um, all the links on where our movies will be screening. We'll, we're going to screen September 2nd in Los Angeles or North Hollywood, technically. <laughs> <laughs> they want to be yeah. known separate from LA, yeah. <laughs> yeah. At the uh, Lemley NoHo 7. And then um, on September 16th, we're going to kick off the indie series mm -hmm. at Maya Cinemas. And that is in four cities in California, Bakersfield, uh, Salinas, Fresno, and Pittsburgh. And then uh, we're planning a few more uh, dates around the country. Um, Texas. 
Yeah, we have a few dates in Texas um, that we're still working out the exact dates, but all of that will be updated on our website. Awesome. Um, so we're, we're always constantly updating the website with the screenings and um, how, that, how audiences can connect and watch the film. Somebody who may be watching this in Minnesota, I can think of some friends I have there, and somebody in Chicago, et cetera. They're interested in bringing the movie to their location, to their own background. Again, how would they contact you and say, look, we're interested to bring it here. We think our community wants to watch it. How would they get a hold of you again? So I believe on our website we have a way to contact us or yes. is there um, a contact? There's yeah. a, a, our email link on our website, uh, which is. Um, oh, is it? Is it the website? Or yeah. Should I just give out the email? Yeah, we can give. The yeah, email. we could just give out our email. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. It's X is in Sam, Y is in Yellow, S is in Sam Productions at yahoo.com. S Y S productions at yahoo.com. I got that down here. Okay. Find us on Facebook as well and message us through, you know, either the agoraphobia page or our, our pages online. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, uh, you know, I have heard that idea before where a person says, Hey, wait a minute. We want it in our town. We want it in our city. We'll support this. Whether it be Austin, Tambien, you mentioned Texas. Absolutely. So ladies and gentlemen, you know, please feel free to contact them and let them know about this whole idea of bringing the movie into your own backyard for your community as well. It's not often that we get this opportunity as well. Now, did you have to do a lot of research to bring this idea, this concept together, or you guys sort of all pretty much had your backgrounds already sort of converge on all this idea of producing this? Well, um, actually, as far as producing it, Richard went to Chapman University, um, got his master's in film, yes. um, in film directing with the emphasis on that. Um, I went to USC. Um, I studied theater and cinema at USC. So um, as far as like technically um, all of the film background, um, studying stories and all of that, we, we were pretty much um, geared for that. But every time we start a new project, there is um, some level of research that goes into it. Mm -hmm. uh, we definitely draw from people that we know in our lives, um, experience, personal experiences, and just personal interests, but there was, I think, a, a, a little bit of research um, that had gone into this particular subject matter because we were dealing mm -hmm. with um, agoraphobia. We're dealing with agoraphobia. We were dealing with mental health issues as well, and we thought that was really important issue to bring into the Latino community um, because this woman is, uh, you know, it's a comedy, and we deal with it in a very light, light manner. Um, but it still brings uh, to the forefront a lot of really important um, social issues with uh, the Latino community, such as mental health. And uh, we also have a, a, the best friend, the transgender character um, in the film, who is played by Carlos Ramsey Ramirez. And um, he's Crystal's best friend. Mm -hmm. And there's another, uh, I guess you could say, uh, layer uh, of... Uh, of acceptance, of building community, and um, and kind of bringing different characters uh, to the Latino audience, as far as uh, the transgender character with the LGBT audience, and, right. and trying to yeah. shed some light uh, and uh, and just more awareness. You know, many times when we see movies, we don't, a lot of us don't understand that there really is a message under all the comedy and all the terminologies and all the play on words that there really is a support. There really is a, a point of discussion that you create through this. And like you mentioned, uh, the whole issue of uh, mental health in the Latino community. I mean, I applaud what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then there was also, uh, we had, you had asked about research, and I don't know if you don't want to talk about a little bit about that, um, any of, of the research that we had done. Um, just, uh, well, you know, when we were writing, um, we were doing, of course, a lot of research on the internet, but we were also um, talking to people who had prior experiences, you know, dealing with agoraphobia. Uh, we were interviewing them and finding out, you know, like this one woman who 
had not been out of the house in what was it 15 years and at all we were oh, wow um her, her husband was the one going out of the house for her and so that's how we kind of uh with crystal's character um when we meet her she hasn't left the house in five years and mm -hmm. how does she function she has her roommate rick who is doing everything for her, you know, grocery shopping, paying the bills and stuff like that. But he's a slacker, stoner <laughs> kind of character. So he might not be the best choice for Crystal to so, be working for. So things fall <laughs> in the cracks. <laughs> oh my God. You know, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to give some, some basic facts that I found out about the, about the illness itself as it's classified uh, very short that is more common in women, that it's 60% uh, of the persons with phobias and uh, 3.2 million people in the world, in the nation, in the United States have the problem. So that's a big number. That's a really big number. Uh, once again, please, your contact information where persons can maintain your schedule, your traveling schedule, where it's going to highlight and contacting you if they want to bring it to their city. So um, you can reach us at our email, sysproductions at yahoo.com. My name is Jade Puga. I'm the writer, producer, and I also star in the film Agoraphobia Opsa Pepe Serna. And, um, and I'm Richard Montes, uh, director, writer of Agoraphobia. And for those who are unsure of who Pepe Serna is, Pepe has been uh, working uh, in Hollywood, one of the first Chicano actors um, in Hollywood since the late 60s. Uh, he's been in uh, many studio blockbuster movies, um, comedy movies as well, The Jerk with Steve Martin, uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Scarface. Uh, he's uh, was the guy who gets his arms chopped off in Scarface. <laughs> That's the role that he's most recognized for. But he was in American Me, Black Dahlia, Postcards from the Edge. I mean, his uh, list of films is too many to name, and he's wonderful in our movie. Yeah, he plays a wonderful, uh, charismatic internet guru, and uh, it, it was lovely working with him. It was it was great working with well, Richard, who was my husband, but it was a uh, <laughs> uh, great to work together. Um, we we've been working together for uh, many years now. Um, we met in college, so uh, we definitely have a shorthand on set, and it, it, it always comes in handy to uh, to know who you're working with on, a, on a, such an intimate level, um, so it was great. <laughs> I have one final question, and then I'd like to, once again, please give out our con your contact information and then uh, allow you time to have some closing statement, but I got to ask you this, and it's very, very uh, sort of personal in the sense that as I look at both of you, I could swear you guys just barely got out of college last year, you know, but obviously that's not true. I mean, you guys have been doing this for a while. So you're, you're very, very young in doing this. And, and usually I always think of older people doing the production work. So I'm glad to see you. What advice do you have to persons that are right now in college or considering to go to college in this world that you're in? Well, one of the things I think that's very important is, um, Try to tell the story you want to tell. Um, don't uh, feel like pigeonholed, like you have to write a certain story, a certain, you know, Hollywood would find you if you write and do something unique. And if you're trying to appease what you think would sell in Hollywood, mm -hmm. then you're not really going to advance. You have, and plus the saying that it's not a sprint, it's a marathon is very true. Especially in the film industry, you really, really need to understand that nothing happens overnight. Even if you become an overnight success, people don't see the years and years before you became that overnight success. It's a lot of hard work, a lot of dedication, but as long as you have passion and you have stories you want to tell, you will be successful. You will, you know, you will find your audience. Yeah, I, 
I think um, just uh, I, I'd say go go to school. Obviously, I think um, it was great experience. I know that there's two different sides to the issue. A lot of people in the entertainment industry, some people say, well, you don't really need schooling to make films. All the technology is available to you. And other people are, uh, did go to, to school for film. Um, I, I'm, I'm an advocate for, for a higher education, especially in our Latino community. I don't think it, it ever is a bad thing. Um, to educate yourself and to uh, to have a different diverse background because even if you um, you know if you go to college for psychology and then you you end up kind of self teaching yourself how to make a film that that can happen as well um, but but I think there's always um, there's definitely great great things that come out of learning from other people learning from people who have who have uh, who are experienced and can teach you a lot. So I'd say honor the artist in you, honor the storyteller in you and, uh, and grow some thick skin. <laughs> <laughs> Very thick skin. But the idea is you guys look like you're having fun. I mean, it doesn't sound to me like you guys had, I mean, it was work. Don't give me, I, I do understand that. There's a lot of behind the scenes and a lot of pressure and tension, but it seems that ultimately you guys are having fun. Yeah, we had a lot of fun. I mean, um, it was stressful at times because uh, we were not working with a you know hundred million dollar Hollywood budget. Right. Um, however, we found, I mean, we love doing it. You know, no matter what situation arose, when we realized we're living our dream and creating a movie, nothing else really mattered. You know, it was just okay. We're making a movie. This is what, you know, it's our fire. We had you know? bread and butter for dinner, but we were making a movie. <laughs> <laughs> we're eating ketchup packets. <laughs> you hear of somebody throwing a party and you think, oh, there's food there. Let's go. You know? <laughs> <laughs> They're leftovers. <laughs> we're, we're, everybody's gone. Don't worry. If there's something left over, we'll be there. I, hey, <laughs> whatever it takes to do it. Oh, my gosh. This is awesome. Please, one more time, let's give out uh, your contact information for persons to learn from you, to see you as a role model, to invite your movie to come to their city, whatever they can do to support, and, and you know, not only in this movie, but also into future productions that you guys are going to do. Um, well, we can be reached at uh, sysproductions at yahoo.com, uh, agoraphobia.com. Uh, also connect with us on Facebook, either... Uh, at Agoraphobia or through Richard Montes or Jade Puga's uh, Facebook page. Uh, we're proof that anything is possible. Um, I grew up in a, a gang-infested neighborhood where by the time I graduated high school, about 20 of my friends had already passed away. Uh, and um, I was the first person in my family to go to college, to a four-year university, and graduate. And Jade Puga, her family were migrant workers. And she was the first... Uh, the well, first uh, female in the family. Um, I had a, uh, a cousin who, had, who was a few years older than me who went to college. Um, and then I was the first female. And I'm glad to say that now... A lot of my girl cousins now are, have, you know, one got her master's, another one um, is, is pursuing her four-year degree. So it's really nice to, to, be, to have been the first one, but to know that, like, there's so many, the rest of the ladies in my family are pursuing their education. So that's really good, I think, for just, it, it means a lot to me. Well, both of you are role models, obviously, independently, and then together you're a powerhouse. I can see that already. And so I just appall what you're doing. I think this is really awesome. And uh, let me leave you. Uh, let's uh, conclude the show with uh, giving each one of you a closing time for a closing statement. And we want to give out your contact information one more time, please. Okay. Closing statement. Uh Connect with us on agoraphobia.com or Facebook, Twitter, Jay Puga, Richard Montes, or Agoraphobia. We are looking to take agoraphobia across the U.S. We're open to bringing it to universities um, and to uh, students 
And also, if you uh, are interested in bringing it to your uh, school, please contact us. If you're interested in bringing it to a theater near you, contact us because we can make that happen through Tug. And um, there's going to be future ways to watch the film. Um, we're, we're working on getting it um, to a larger audience. So uh, definitely please uh, uh, check in with us on our website, agurophobia.com, where we will have all of the updates on there. And um, please join us on September 2nd if you're in the Los Angeles area at the Lemley Noho 7. I guarantee you will probably laugh. <laughs> if I say, now you can throw a tomato <laughs> at me. You, you, <laughs> wait, were they on drugs when they wrote that? But we weren't. <laughs> We get that a lot. <laughs> Drug-free zone over here. <laughs> uh, too much Cheech and Chong in our background here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Cheech and Chong were uh, one of my bigger influences when I was going to film school. Um, they reminded me of family members, you know, that I have that would behave like them. <laughs> And then so seeing them represented on a big screen was, you know, I could relate and watching, you know, other Hollywood productions, there's not a lot of people you can relate to on the screen. And one of the, the things that I'm proud of, of with Agoraphobia is that many people have said, many Latinos have come up and said, thank you. A lot of the characters represented our family members. And when we were watching the movie, we felt like we were watching our family up there. <laughs> and so I don't know how wacky their family is. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm always afraid when I'm listening to George Lopez, how many of us are sitting back there and we're not laughing at what he's saying. We're laughing that he's talking about somebody in the family. That's what I think we're always laughing at. Yeah. <laughs> but you notice, you notice, I'm going to throw this into the script. You notice that we're laughing at, we say people in our family, but we never say, not moi. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> you of that, and I, wait a minute. All right, now, now I'm worried. Now I got to go back and check to see what the family says. Please. <laughs> I know I'm breaking my own rules, but one more time, your contact information. Everybody's got to get behind this. Okay. Um, our emails is sysproductions at yahoo.com. And you can uh, reach uh, and find out where Agoraphobia is screening by going to agoraphobia.com or on Facebook, Agoraphobia. Or you can find Jay Puga or Richard Montes on Facebook, Twitter, and all those social media platforms. And uh, send us a message. And uh, we would really like to meet you know, people who go to our screenings. After the screenings, come up and talk to us. We're willing to answer questions. And um, really just, you know, any help we can get, advice, you know, we're willing to do it. But we just want people to see that there's other films out there that Latinos are making that are um, positive and uh, fun. And we want, you know, we want people, we want to really open doors and, you know, just show Latinos how we are as people. You know, I just it just dawned on me. I didn't see San Diego on the list. I mean, San Diego, big supporter. Not on the list yet. Um, huh. Yeah, yet. So I, I, we're going to be uh, working with uh, different groups in different areas, and uh, we're hoping to bring it to San Diego. Uh, it, it's like I'm a we're kind of a two man team right now, and uh, so we're we're taking it kind of city by city and trying to connect to um, a community already a kind of a built-in community. So if there's anybody in San Diego that wants to jump on board, bring a guru phobia to your school or to a theater near you, please connect with us. Absolutely. That's what Don, I mean, I, I know people down there, well, we all do, but I'm just saying San Diego is a very, very strong supporter of the arts. So this definitely should be in San Diego as well. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. We've been interviewing Jade Puga and Richard Montes. It's a powerhouse team. I know they're up and coming. They sacrificed a great deal of time, energy, and effort 
to put this together. I'm pretty sure that when they came up with the idea that they were going to do this, I didn't ask them, but I'm pretty sure that when they came up with the idea, people thought they were probably crazy. But it's the crazy people, it's the crazy people that do things in this world. You know, you gotta get me started. And they look like two crazy people. I mean, look at their script. But we're all going to enjoy seeing this production. Please, please visit their website. If you have any questions at all, also contact me, and I'll redirect you to their website, to their site. And this is on demand. Share this video with other persons anywhere that's got a theater, large or small. Uh, I'm definitely going to send this to my college friends and all my contacts. Uh, it's going to Minnesota. I'm letting you guys know up there. I'm sending it to you guys everywhere. Now bring this film everywhere. Let's get us dialoguing. And more importantly, we're going to see these, this couple and others like them also up and coming and bringing movies that we can relate to other than being able to just say, gee, how come we're not up there? Because we're not taking the energy and being proactive. And here's an opportunity to be proactive. Let's support Richard and Jade. I wish you luck. I know you don't need it because you guys are already on, on the road going forward. And uh, But our support can help you go faster. And thank you for bringing these messages to our community, to us, and bringing laughter to each of us. Thank you, Armando. Thank you so much for having us on. Thank you so much. Uh, we look forward to having you on how this movie is produced, is going on, and then we got to get ready for your next two, three, four, five movies in the future. That's right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. Adios. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, you can contact me at lsacnational at hotmail.com. You can also get a hold of me on Facebook and LinkedIn, Armando F. Sanchez. It's been an honor and a pleasure to interview Richard Montes and Jade Puga and their movie. And let's go see it. I'll see you there. Thank you. Adios. Thank you.